Hey folks, NickMock007 back again, and sorry I haven't been able to put out more videos, or maybe you've been enjoying not seeing me. But uh, tough, I'm back today, and I'm going to learn you about some more advanced lighting topics, so uh, sit back, relax, and let's talk about CRI and Kelvin. Alright, so I've got several videos I'm trying to get out. Uh, soon I need to give you an update about this uh, project behind me, uh, Total Rescape, um, out with the dirt, in with the EcoComplete and EI method, but we'll do that later. I wanted to give you a real quick uh, shout out to a buddy of mine here on YouTube, uh, Pedro Madera, and uh, I don't do a lot of shout outs, so hopefully you'll give his channel a chance. Um, it's a much smaller channel than it should be. I mean, he does beautifully aquascaped high-tech tanks, and he's freaking hilarious, so um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, though I could go on for a while, uh, please go check them out. I uh, see the link in the description or uh, click right there. Okay, so uh, let's get back to lighting. Now, in my last video, the one before Science Alliance, I talked to you about PAR and PER uh, and a little bit about LUX. That still leaves quite a few important variables unaccounted for. Uh, most importantly, CRI and Kelvin temperature. So let's get started with Kelvins. Now, maybe you've heard of this before, but uh, even if you haven't, I can guarantee you have heard of like 6,500 or 6,700K. Well, what did you think that K was for? Cracker Jacks? Uh, wrong, it's for Kelvin. So uh, let's take a look at this scale for a second. Now, uh, look at all the uh, pretty rainbow colors, um, which this is just a visual representation of lighting colors as we perceive them. And this is the Kelvin temperature scale. Now off to one end you've got reds and off to the other extreme you've got blues and somewhere in the middle you've got your yellowy pale blues or something. Now notice where 6500 and 6700K is on that scale. All right, so I lied to you a second before when I said Kelvin is how we perceive these colors. Let's get a little bit more sciency. Kelvin color is actually the visible color uh, developed by a black body when it's heated to that temperature on an absolute scale, which is known as Kelvin's instead of Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now for reference, um, absolute zero is roughly negative 273 Celsius or negative 459 Fahrenheit. And you thought that polar vortex was cold last winter. Uh, just to get you thinking about this though, uh, think about heating the coil on your stove and how it turns red when it's hot. But now also think back to your high school chemistry days. Do you remember which fire is hotter when you were playing with a Bunsen burner instead of listening to your teacher? Red or blue? Well. Blue fire is the hotter uh, than red. Now, remember that temperature scale? Which was the higher number? Uh, blue. All right, so we're starting to see a pattern here. Now, with the lowest visible color temperature, the spectrum is red. And as the, uh, as the temperature rises, progressively shorter wavelengths of visible light are added uh, until finally the spectrum is predominantly blue. So now you know the theory, but what about in practice? So the Kelvin color temperature describing light bulbs are not really Kelvin color temperature spectrums at all. Modern lights typically use mixtures of phosphor, which convert one radiant energy into a mixture um, of lights of a specific narrow wavelength in the visible spectrum in proportion to the specific phosphor present in the mixture. So think about your fluorescent bulbs like T5s or T8s. Or uh, they excite a mixture of gases to give off uh, light in a narrow bandwidth peculiar to the mixture of the elements present in the gas mixture of the bulb. So then the manufacturers of these bulbs with their peculiar spectrums then approximate the resultant color um, to a specific Kelvin color temperature. So what that means is uh, that leaves you to make an educated guess at uh, exactly what wavelength of visible light the spectrum of these bulbs contain. So as you can see, a little bit of science and a little bit of fiction, or Science fiction. All right. Okay, what about CRI though? Well, first off, what does CRI even stand for? So it's Color Rendering Index. And what that means is the ability of a light source to enable every object viewed to show its true color. And I'm going to give you an example of that in a minute here. It's going to make it, uh, I think, a little bit easier to understand. But now you uh, would think that CRI and Kelvin color temperature would be directly related, but they're not. I mean, think about it for a second. You would think that seeing something lit by a red light source versus a blue light source would alter the ability to tell true colors, but it's actually more complicated. So let's think about CRI. It's graded on a 100 point scale with sunlight itself used as a reference for a CRI of 100. But let's go a little bit more in depth. I've seen people say that Kelvin is how we see the light and CRI is how the plants see the light. Thus, CRI is the number you want to look at if you want healthy plants. But the problem is that reasoning is off, although the conclusion might actually be correct. 
Let's be clear though, CRI has nothing to do with optimal plant growth, quite the opposite. It has everything to do with human vision, what we find aesthetically pleasing and how colors appear to us, not to the plants. But there's no color, uh, there's no clear evidence that the color temperature of the Kelvin scale has anything to do with optimal plant growth either. Now, we talked a bit about that in my last two videos, so hopefully that sounds familiar. But suffice to say, there are no conclusions to be drawn here on whether certain wavelengths cause quote unquote optimal growth. Now, remember why you keep a planet tank in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want nature, you know, a slice of nature in your living room and all that jazz. But let's get real here. If you just wanted to have a slice of nature, you'd want more algae in your tanks. You'd want, you know, big fish eating your little fish and all that kind of stuff. What we really want is our tanks to look good and to be a form of art. So CRI and color temperature are just as important in this regard. These indicators help us to get our aquariums and plants to appear good to us. Now, if what looks good to you is to mimic the appearance of sunlight, then you need a bulb in the 4000 to about 7500K spectrum with a very high CRI. And as I mentioned, CRI and color temperature are not related. And the reason they're not related has to do with the human eye and our ability to correctly perceive colors under a wide range of different lighting sources. So CRI describes our ability to color match under a specific lighting source. And let me give you those examples I promised. So let's pretend you drive a white car. Do you have a hard time recognizing that car at different times of day? Uh, certainly not. That is to say your white car will still look white to you at dawn, noon, dusk, or even at night. So put it another way, you know, piece of paper looks gonna look white to you in your office and your, you know, uh, lit by the moon or in your living room. Now, as humans, we have the ability to quote unquote white balance uh, in real time for, you know, all my photographer buddies out there that know about white balancing. So think about your camera for a second. If you photograph that white car and then photometrically measure the color in the resulting uh, picture, it would actually be blue, neutral, red, orange, uh, depending on the time of day, uh, the cloud pattern and the white balance of your camera. Hence the difference between us and cameras. Cameras are not very good at white balancing on their own. And that's why any good photographer will tell you, you've got to manually set your white balance on your camera. All right, so if you're not a photographer, maybe that didn't make a lot of sense, but uh, basically you give the camera a reference point. You tell the camera, this is white. Remember it and base all the other colors relative to it. All right, so now as a funky homo sapien, your brain does all that without any conscious thought from you. Uh, remember how I told you that the sun is used um, uh, as a reference for CRI of 100? So the sun has a very smooth spectrum with its wavelengths uh, present across the entire visible spectrum. And when we look at the sun from our atmosphere, it can have a specific temperature, say roughly 5200K is the number you typically hear. But the combination of the sky, the sun, the atmosphere uh, could produce overall skylight with color temperatures anywhere between 2000 or 10,000K depending on time of day, the weather, the altitude, the season, you get the idea. But here is the key. No matter what color uh, temperature the sunlight appeared, you would still be able to tell which object is white. All right, that's precisely why we call what we call high CRI. The color uh, temperature is irrelevant. The next question is, how do we use this info to make our tanks look better? Now, let's consider the room you have your tank uh, in as the reference point. If your room lighting is lit with 10,000 K bulbs, then your eyes are gonna quickly adapt to this light and you won't perceive other colors in the room as blue. And by the way, the same is true for any color temperature, so don't get caught up with the 10,000 K reference. So in this, uh, in this room, if you then put a 3,200 K bulb uh, over your tank, in this, remember, room lit with 10,000 K bulbs, the aquarium is really gonna appear orange to you. And this is simply because your reference room is 10,000 K and your brain will have white balance remember that term from before, and decided that 10,000K is white. So, if you want the most natural visual effect, then you'd actually want to match your aquarium bulb temperature to that of your room lighting, which is not something most people think about. But that won't mean that you'll be able to judge uh, separations in color accurately. For that, you'd actually need to choose a bulb with a high CRI. Now, we could go even, to, excuse me, we could go into even more details, but I think I'm gonna leave you with a few final thoughts here. Uh, so for incandescent bulbs, which most of us are not using these days, you'll typically find a smooth spectrum uh, more like the sun. Uh, with fluorescent bulbs and LEDs, it's uh, relative proportions of uh, red, green, and blue, or RGB as you'll see, uh, and these bulbs that define its color temperature. 
However, the CRI rating will be dependent on uh, how other factors, and I'm not going to go into here unless I get a lot of comments asking me about uh, metamerism, which is just two different RGB definitions for the same color. But Nickmock 007, that's all fine and well. You talk about uh, metamerizing lights, and what about a general guideline, a simple rule of thumb? Yes, well, if you hadn't interrupted me, I was actually going to tell you, uh, just uh, so you have a standard reference point, um, cool white fluorescent bulbs uh, typically have a CRI of about 62. But on the low end, we could have uh, CRIs as, you know, in, in a range of around 25, where as a high quality bulb is going to have a CRI of 85, 90, 95. So in conclusion, remember, we want lighting that's good for our plants, but also pleasing for us. Accurately reproducing sunlight need not always be the goal but a good goal would be producing accurate and pleasing colors. Chances are, if you buy decent bulbs with higher CRIs, then you're going to have a good-looking tank that also grows plants well. Now, what are your thoughts? Tell me about what bulbs or fixtures you run, uh, and do you even pay attention to CRI? So, I'll see you in the next one, but until then, remember, don't stop believing.